Hello, today I will demonstrate WebLogic on Kubernetes managed by the operator. Now I will go through the steps that would be required to deploy the WebLogic domain in Kubernetes. The first thing that a user would do is create a WebLogic domain image, that is, an image that contains the WebLogic binaries, the domain configuration, and the applications deployed to that domain. Also, users would pull a operator image into the local repository, as well as any images required for load balancers. The next step would be to add the admin server credentials to a Kubernetes secret, as well as any data source credentials. The next step would be using Helm to deploy the WebLogic operator in the Kubernetes cluster. Using different Helm, a user could deploy a load balancer. We support three kinds of load balancers. We support Traffic, Voyager, and Apache. We provide flexibility where if a user already has deployed a load balancer, they can leverage that to load balance traffic to the WebLogic servers that are running inside of Kubernetes. The next step would be for a user to create a persistent volume. Now we need to create the domain custom resource. The user would edit a domain inputs YAML, which contains all the information required to create that domain custom resource. Things like name of the WebLogic domain image that will be needed to deploy the WebLogic servers inside of containers and pods. Ports do you want exposed on the admin server so that you can reach the WebLogic server console. Number of managed servers that you want to run. And then using kubectl create or apply and passing in the domain YAML, you would create the domain custom resource. As soon as the operator sees that the domain custom resource has been created, it will stand up the WebLogic domain. And then using kubectl commands, users can manage the resources that the operator created on behalf of the WebLogic domain. We provide flexibility on where the WebLogic server logs can be persisted or stored. They can be stored on a persistent volume, or they can go to the standard out of the pod, or you could use the logging exporter to export the WebLogic server logs directly to the Elastic stack. I want to demo uh, the deployment of the WebLogic Kubernetes operator as well as a WebLogic domain, and then I'll do some scaling actions. So the first thing I want to show is that I have no pods for the operator or the WebLogic servers running in this Kubernetes OKE cluster. I just have Kubernetes system pods as well as one traffic ingress controller pod running. So I'm going to create the namespace for the operator. There it is. Now I will create the service account. Okay, so that's all created. So the next is to invoke the Helm chart to deploy the WebLogic operator. So let me show you that. So here you see the Helm chart with the name of the namespace of the operator. And then note that in the domain namespaces, I'm keeping blank, meaning um, I have not created a domain namespace. So let me invoke it. Okay, excellent. So now let's see if it's running. And there's a pod running the operator. So now I'll create the domain. Okay, I'm going to now create the namespace for sample domain one. So it's been created. Now I need to register that namespace with the operator and with the load balancer traffic. So, so it's going to be a Helm update. So I have a script. So 
So I'm going to uh, show you the Helm Update command. Changing the domain namespaces to add the namespace of the domain that I just created. So let me invoke it. Okay, now traffic. When I create the ingress inside of the domain namespace of the domain, it knows to control it. Okay. The next step is to create the secrets with the admin server credentials. Let me show you the kubectl commands. The first one creates a secret in the Kubernetes secret called sample domain one web logic credentials, and I pass it in the username and password. And then I'm going to label the secret. So when I invoke this, okay, let's look at it. I have a secret called sample domain one web logic credential. The next step would be to create the custom resource for the domain, the domain YAML. I have the domain UID, the name, space, the server start policies if needed, the Java options, the port for the admin server so that we can start the console. The clusters, we have two replicas. Do a cube cuddle. Pass in the domain YAML. And this will create the custom resource. So if I do a cube cuddle describe of the domain custom resource called sample domain one. Here is the custom resource. Okay, so you see that the admin server is already running and then there's two managed servers. The pods are running and the managed servers are coming up. So let's go to the browser and try to uh, start the admin console. So here I have the admin servers already running. My managed servers are not up yet. If I look at deployments, I see I have I have a credit score application deployed to the cluster, to cluster one. And then under services, I have a data source. There is test data source. So let's see if now the managed servers are up. One is up, the other one is on its way. Okay, so the next thing is to create the ingress. So if you uh, look, I'm just going to do a cube cuddle apply of the YAML that represents the ingress, which will be running in the namespace of the domain. So now I should be able to go and reach the managed server's application. There it is. Let's scale the WebLogic clusters. There are two ways you can scale. The first way is actually going directly and editing the custom resource. So let's do that. Okay, so here is, and I'm going to go to the replicas, which now is two. I'm going to change that to three. So when I edit this, What's going to happen is that the operator immediately is going to see the change and it's going to want to adjust so that the desired state is there. If I go and look at my pods, now I have managed server three that is starting to come up. So the pod is up and the server is on its way up. The other way to scale or shrink the WebLogic cluster is by editing the domain YAML. So if I go to replicas, and instead of two, I do one, let's say. And I do a cube cuddle apply of the domain YAML. 
then I should see that two managed servers get terminated. And there you see it. In summary, we see our customers developing uh, their new applications as microservices and serverless applications, both in private and public clouds. They use Docker containers and Kubernetes to orchestrate those containers. The same customers have a large deployment of existing applications on premises and want to migrate those applications into the same cloud neutral infrastructure where they're running their microservices and using the same kind of tools to monitor, uh, gather logs and analyze their deployments. So we have leveraged the, this cloud neutral infrastructure by providing tooling to help our customers do that migration with an operator to manage the web logic life cycle of the domain with a deploy tooling to help that migration taking existing domain configuration and introspecting that domain configuration in the form of a yaml file and then creating a domain inside of an image or on a persistent volume using the WebLogic deploy tooling. The final objective is to evolve WebLogic and coherence to be able to run in these cloud neutral infrastructures. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Thank you very much.